Okay. So, yes, I'm Wesley. I'm the grants coordinator here at Foundation. Um, we are the UK's leading funder of new music and talent development. Um, it was founded by PRS for Music, the Collection Society, about 20 years ago, but we are now, it's, it's grown and changed over the years, we're now an independent charity, uh, completely separate, so if you're an emerging artist and you're not a member of PRS for Music yet, you can still apply to many of our grants. Um, our funding is really based around as it kind of implies at the start of that title there, the, the creation and performance of new music. And what we mean by that is that we fund music creators. So anyone making, writing, composing new music is, is primarily who we're looking to fund. So across all of our funds, generally, we can support uh, the creation of new music, the recording of new music. I, could you call back? Live I'm, programming. I'm Zoom meeting. Um, commissions of new music, community projects, residencies, marketing, and international. Yeah, so with I'm, all of those things, especially marketing, we really want to see the focus of your project on the creation, the recording, or the performance of music. And obviously you need marketing to let the world know that's happening, but we, we would rarely fund something that's 100% just for the marketing of a project. We want to be part of paying for the actual creation. Um, Generally, we can split our funds into two groups. We have some funding for organizations and other funders for individuals, music creators. So our organizations, we have the Open Fund for Organizations, which is open to anyone. It's up to um, 10,000 pounds. And that's uh, really, we prioritize nonprofit organizations and, and things like that. And then our Talent Development Partner Network is a closed network of, of different organizations that are invited to be a part of that on a yearly basis. Um, they're all over the country. We have. 49, it's growing to 52 this year across all different genres. And, and the aim of those really is that we recognize that we, we, although it might seem like we're a large organization, we're actually quite a small organization. Um, so it's important that we have access to people who are experts in their regions and genres and know what's going on where they are. So we're not just coming at it from one, one particular angle. Um, with uh, music creators, we have all careers and all genres and some funds are specifically targeted to certain things some some are open to anything we have early career then we have an all career we have our next steps level and then our international level and um this brings to a point we are not a community arts funder or generally just an arts funder we're a talent development funding organization and by, by that we mean we fund opportunities for people to progress their career in music or to progress their creative development, whether that's a, a basic example of that would be if you've made three albums on your own, you've recorded with the same people and you release it in a certain way every time and you come to us for an application where you're asking to do the same thing again, the question is going to be how is this actually going to make much difference to your, your practice if that's what you always do, why is this a significant opportunity? And that's not to say that that isn't a viable or legitimate way to be a music creator because it obviously absolutely is it's just not what we prioritize and what we look for we need to see a specific opportunity for what you're asking to do um, so the open fund which i think would probably be the most relevant to today and, and, and the people here um, is up to five thousand pounds for music creators it's uh, up to £10,000 for organisations, and again, that's festivals, venues, promoters, but we prioritise non for profits. There's three deadlines per year, uh, for June and October, and we recognise that some, some funding applications can be quite daunting, or, and it's just a bit of a minefield to approach, um, but you shouldn't have to be an academic to be able to ask for money. Like we, we're the funding organisation, we're the funding experts. It should be acceptable for you to just be excellent at music. And so for, based on that, our, our applications are relatively straightforward. We try and make them as accessible as possible. And as part of that, if you don't want to do a written application, you can just submit a video of yourself talking about your project and what you want to do. You still have to fill in some form questions, um, but, but the majority and bulk of what you're doing is the video. And I would say if you are looking to apply, and it does seem daunting, just get in touch with us for any questions or advice and we'll be happy to help. Um, Another fund we have that's part of the Open Fund Suite is uh, Women Make Music, which is essentially the same rules, but obviously it only applies to women. 
or gender minorities. Um, but that's still £5,000 and it's still all about the creation and performance of music. Um, reason, reasoning for that is generally that the uptake of women as part of PRS for music is very, very low. And, and it's just a way of, of ensuring we get more of those people coming through for our funds. Um, this is Momentum Fund is probably our flagship fund and we do find almost that people know of the Momentum Fund more than they know of us. Um, this is supported by PPL. Um, it's up to 15K and it's the highest grant amount that we offer. And it's really geared, it's kind of unique in the funding world in a way because it's geared towards commercial music. Um, so it's more pop, but uh, some jazz artists have gone through it if you lean that way. So I don't know, people like Shabaka Hutchings or you know, The Comet's Coming, those kind, of, those kind of things can come through that fund. But it's, you really have to be at what we call a tipping point <coughs> out to become a self-sufficient full-time musician. That will be your full-time job. You won't ever have to come back to us for funding again. And as part of that, if you do receive this grant from us, you can't come back for another grant outside of anything international because that implies going backwards. Um, so it's very key that you're at the right time for that fund. We also have Hitmaker Fund and the Composer Fund, which might be less relevant to, to you guys. Composer Fund is classically um, leaning, because that's kind of a very different world. And the Hitmaker Fund is for non-performing producers and writers. It might not be so relevant. We also have an international showcase fund. So if you're asked to play at any international like trade show style um, showcases, so not festivals, not general public festivals, but South by Southwest, Focal Arts, Eurosonic, those kinds of things. Uh, as soon as you get an official invite to come to that, you can apply to us and we can help support with travel, accommodation, visa costs, all those sorts of things. At the moment, every, everything's obviously online. They're still going ahead, but, but if that's something you've been invited to do and you need help, my advice would be to just get in touch at the time because it's, it seems to be constantly changing with constant government guidelines changing here and obviously wherever it is you are going to be performing at or, or working with. <clears throat> so that's really a very quick and brief overview of, of what we do. Um, with that talent development thing in mind, we have internally what we would call our talent development pipeline. And that's back to, maybe if I just jump back here, here with our early career support, all level support, next step support and international support. We expect someone to come in at an early career level, work their way through to the open fund, then to momentum and then, and then out in, and not go backwards. Um, an example of a jazz person uh, would be Moses Boyd, say great jazz drummer, came in for our Steve Reed Innovation Award, which is an early career jazz um, scheme that we have. Then they had open fund, uh, for a couple of projects, I think. Then they have the Momentum Fund, and then they're out the other end. I think they've had a couple of international showcase opportunities, but that's an example of, of how that works. And that's really what we're looking to do across all of our funds and schemes. Um, maybe best to talk about top tips when we have a bit more of a conversation about what, what goes on. But I think the, the most key tip I could ever give anyone is make sure that you have all the detail and specifics in your application. We don't want to see uh, a pitch of an idea of what you would like to do. It needs to be structured more like an actual plan of how this is going to happen. Not that, so approach it rather than I would like to do this if I get the money. It's more, I am doing this and this is how it's going to work. Um, just because again, about that talent development angle, we need to be able to read your application and assess whether this is a good, a good opportunity for you. So you're not compared to everything else that's in the round at that time. Your, your, the comparison and the barometer that we use to, de to determine whether this is good or not is how good is this opportunity for you specifically? And we don't know that if say you're making a record and you haven't included who you're making it with and where you're doing it and why you've chosen them. Or if we're using a PR company, who are they and why are you using them and what are they gonna do for you that's different than you've done before? So I'd say anytime you say in an application to us that you're doing something, back it up with a specific example of how and why that's gonna work. That's the best, uh, advice I could ever give you and I think now with everything that's going on we've seen a huge demand a huge rise in demand for our grants but by making sure that you've covered those bases you're already putting yourself quite far up the pack compared to a, a bulk of applications that just won't, won't have those specifics and won't get that far so that, that's the key information and as I mentioned we are 
an independent charity and these are some of the many many organizations that support us uh, with what we do so yeah that's a a very very quick whistle stop tour of our funds and i i appreciate that we do a lot of different schemes and it can seem quite unwieldy to look at especially with our website that is not the most straightforward and intuitive thing to use um so yes i would say do get in touch um if you have any questions at the time of, of applying so yeah that's that's that mm -hmm. Thank you oh, so be... much, Wesley. I hope I'm coming across a good It's better, but it's still Am quite I coming? Good. Is that... oh, okay. I will I'll turn my video off. Sorry everyone. Um is this better? That's better, yeah. No. Okay, let's open the floor to questions. Um, I wanted to just mention that are some promoters here. It's quite easy to get um focused on artists but promoters please also put your questions forward and we'll do it through the chat so, so just quickly on that when so, i mentioned we have a fund on if we can fund organizations we would count a promoter as an organization so you can apply to those funds um, as a promoter yes cool so turnaround times um so with the open fund, I assume you've applied to the open fund. Um, we have three deadlines a year. Um, everything is assessed in bulk after the deadline. So it doesn't matter when you applied, when it gets to the deadline, which was last month, I think, um, everything starts to be assessed then. And the process is, in the, in the first instance, it's assessed by two people, one PRS member of staff, and one of our um, expert assessors so we have a, a pool of 600 assessors based all over the country um, and you will always be assessed by someone who works specifically in what you do so they will know your world and, and where you are um, and then from there the high scoring applications go to a panel of six people where it's whittled down again to the ones who have been successful then it goes to our board who say okay and then the decisions go out so that can be up to 10 weeks and with the open fund, your decision will be April 23rd. I think you should hear back around the April 23rd. Right. Do all participants in the project want their to be? Um, you have to be based in the UK. Uh, you, in order to apply to any of our grants, you have to be based in the UK, but you don't have to be originally from the UK. You just have to be based here. Now that, that's all that is. Um, is there, did I see? I just want to make sure I'm not missing any questions here, sorry. Please could everybody mute? Uh, somebody's sneezing. <laughs> oh, um, the four deadlines for momentum. Um, they should all be on our website, but I think we've just had a deadline now. Um, so the next deadline would, I imagine, would probably be May. But let me just pull that up. And also about momentum, if, if we have a, a spin. Which is, which is funded by Yorkshire, Yorkshire Council. So that's something we might roll, roll around or to roll around to other regions as well when the support comes in, where, so that there's sort of a pre-momentum level momentum, because it's quite, quite hard to get that. Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up. Yeah, so the last deadline for momentum was 15th of February. Um, thank you for that, bless you. So um, uh, I would imagine the next one would be around May. But generally what happens is after a deadline, the applications completely close, so you can't apply. And then when they open again, um, that's when the deadline will be announced because things kind of move around a little bit in that world because everything overlaps. Again, we, we have around 35 deadlines a year. And so if, if one thing gets delayed, it pushes everything else back and all that sort of stuff. Um, I would suggest in those instances, sign up to all of our social media and our newsletter, which you can sign up to, and then you'll be advised of when deadlines are coming up and what's going on and that sort of thing. Um, Wesley, can you hear me? I can, yes. Um, <clears throat> the Open Fund for Organizations. Um, to what extent does uh, the performance 
uh, auteuring aspect of a new piece of work count uh, in an application. In other words, one is applying to create a new piece of music. Uh, obviously, one's going to present it. But to what extent is that presentation um, important or and the length of it uh, sure. important in the application? So, um, so you can really apply for the, the creation and or the performance aspect of something. So you don't have to apply to do any performance of it. You can apply purely to create the piece. Um, but if you are adding something in, it, it just has to make sense. It, it just, your, your plan for doing that tour just has to be viable and make sense really. That, that's, that's all it really is. But you don't have to do something if you don't feel like it's, it's part of what you need the money for, if you see what I mean. Um, and yeah, it, it just really has to be uh, relevant to you and where you are and what you want to do. That is, all of our funding is based on your individual development needs and where you are. So yeah, I, would, I wouldn't worry too much if you, if you think the performance aspect is lacking compared to the creating aspect. Just focus on the creating, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, there's an, I don't want to miss any questions. Um, is this an open organization? Sorry, that's cutting out again. I couldn't really understand that one. Um, it is a partnership group and organization. Um, so with our organization funding, as, as our funding is all based on the development of the music creator, we're always more interested in the music creators you're working with than the organization. And so the organization generally needs to have a track record of success in developing talent. So if your partnership has an existing uh, track record of success developing music creators, then yes, that's fine. Um, it, it, yeah, it's, it's all about the development of the music creator that we're most interested in, essentially. Um, I've just seen a quick question here about um, in-kind support. If I just jump on that one quickly. Um, so you can include other funders and stuff, um, other trusts and foundations who are supporting your project. We have two sections in the budget, one's confirmed and one's unconfirmed. So obviously if you have it, you can put it in confirmed. If you've just applied and you haven't heard back yet, you can put it in unconfirmed just so we can see the bigger picture of what's going on. And it's always great to see that other people are invested in the project, but obviously it gives it a bit of gravity, but you don't have to match fund anything. If you don't have any other support from anybody else, that's absolutely fine. The only thing is we can't 100% fund projects. So you'd need to put some of your own money in. Um, and there's no quota for that. It just has to be anything. It can be a, it can be a token amount. Um, it can also be prospective costs. So if you're looking to make a record, you can include in your income the amount of money you expect to make from selling that record. Or if you're going on tour, you can include the amount of money you expect to make on tour as part of your income. Um, that, that's really just a formality that we can't 100% fund any project. Um, yeah, the question about um, activity starting and ending. Usually in a normal year, expect about expenditure and in-kind balancing in the budgets support well I didn't quite catch that I would also well on that budget actually we'll be we've just finished a video guidance for our budgets so when you do come to complete the budget we give you a step-by-step -step of each section how to do that so that should be fine um, but with that start and end thing yeah normally we would expect a year once you've had your once you've had your offer and signed off a letter we'd expect that project to be done in a year but now we're being as flexible as we possibly can with that we've had lots of projects roll over because obviously if someone's applied for a tour they can't tour right now we're not going to take that money away from them it just it'll happen when it can happen um 
We are also still accepting applications for live performances. And it's again, it's under that proviso that it will just happen when it can happen and it's safe to do so. And you won't be pushed into doing it until it's are safe to do so and you won't lose your grant. Um, but yeah, normally a year at the moment, we're kind of rolling until the situation stabilizes. Um, proportion of applications which succeed. Um, this can sound quite disheartening. Um, normally, it's around, depending on the grant scheme, it's between 10 and 15% of the applications we receive are successful. Um, a lot of that is down to the amount of money we have to spend against the demand that we see. Now that's obviously gone up. We haven't got the stats yet, but I would imagine at the end of this year that will drop below 10%. Um, but that advice I gave at the end of the presentation about having details and specifics in your application will already put you higher up in, in, you know, in the running order of successful. I mean, it, it's the number one reason why applications aren't funded is because there's just no specifics in what this project actually is. And as long as you're doing that, you have a much better chance of success. Can you apply to the Open Fund as part of a wider partner funded project? Yes, you can. Um, yeah, if, if your project is, is involving other people, it's absolutely fine to apply to the Open Fund fund for that as well. Again, we want to see our money going towards the creation or the performance of whatever it is you're doing. So if someone else can, can chip in with all the other costs and you want then want to apply to us to do that, that's absolutely fine. The question here, interesting one, do you support music projects with a technology focus? Um, would that, Helen, would you be able to elaborate on that if that's all right? Don't mind me calling you out. Yes, no, no problem at all. Hi, and thanks for this. Um, my project involves um, collaborating with members of the public as well as part of my practice, creating music, but also um, using various apps to to collect to collect um, to collect the the music, the input that I would then turn into the output, and um, basically a lot of that is research and development so i'm wondering and that's the technical aspect it's not that i'm going to be um, developing the technology per se but it's using a lot of the existing technology that's out there but a lot of it is quite research um based so i'm wondering if um prs fund sort of things like that it's new music but it's depending on on, on you know yeah technology and algorithms can be used you know to create to generate the output yeah, that's a really interesting one. Um, we have previously funded um, people like live coders who, who code music live and things like that. Um, so as long as you can make the case for the, the creative aspect of making that music, then yes, I would say you can. And obviously things, things are moving that way anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, and it's always exciting to get an, an interesting angle on a project is something that's going to make you stand out. You know, so yeah, I would say that that sounds pretty interesting and good. Excellent, brilliant. It is, and it's fun as well. So thank you <laughs> yeah. for that. Cheers. Cool. All good. Um, so the question about all participants uh, having to be PRS members. So as I mentioned, we are a separate organisation to PRS for Music and an independent charity. So no, you do not. Um, however, for a lot of our funds, you do ha you cannot be a member of another collection society. So if you're a member of ASCAP in America or APRA in Australia or something like that, then you are ineligible because PRS for Music still donate. They're, they're our main donor. Um, so they don't really want us using that money to fund other people. Um, so it's either you're not a member of any collection society, that's fine, or you're a member of PRS, that's also fine. Um, does PRS offer a fund appropriate to projects which involve British musicians who live in different countries in Europe? Um, not, not per se, no. We, we, we've occasionally had um, some other things we've done, say, with the British Council about music and residents in China and South America uh, and Russia and things like that. But they come and go and they're not really part of our core uh, schemes, which are essentially for... Uh, music creators based in the UK doing projects that are based in the UK. You can have up to 30% of your um, application through the Open Fund as international, but no more than that, unfortunately. And the only international stuff we offer 
is our showcase fund, and that's only if you've been asked for a showcase. One of the reasons for that is that there are many, as, as I'm sure you're aware, many, many funders out there. And we're not all the same. We all offer different things for different reasons. And we also don't want to step on each other's toes. So there's other organizations like Meg's, probably Arts Council would be able to help with something like that as well. Um, and so I would suggest going there for those sorts of things. Um, as, but if then, if everyone's based in the UK and the money's not going to people based in different countries, then yes, you probably could. Again, that might be a more specific conversation. I don't know, maybe James, did you have a, is this an actual project you're asking about? I don't know. Also, sorry to say, if, if you're not that keen on talking now, I'm happy to have a conversation with anyone afterwards, phone call about anything specific, if you like. Okay. Have we been awarding more grants for streaming projects during the lockdown? Yes. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, obviously, everyone's made the pivot to streaming because um, they've had to. So we have had a lot coming in. Again, one thing we've definitely seen is people who have really no uh, previous experience of doing that coming in for a grant to do it without really explaining how they're going to do that. And when you haven't got a track record of, of doing it before, it's very difficult to know whether it's actually going to work or not and be of benefit to the music creators involved. So again, if you are looking to come in to do streaming, um, then you just need to have a, a, a pretty comprehensive plan of how that's going to work, who you're working with, what they're going to do for you, all that sort of stuff. Um, and again, if you if you feel like it's something you're not really going to get that much out of, you can still come in for live and then you can do that whenever it's possible to do so. Cool. Um, if you are requesting PRS funding for a subset of a larger activity, sorry, I'm reading these out loud. Cool. So all of our all of our funding is project based. So we don't fund uh, year round. Oh, sorry, I should read the question. The question is about um, funding uh, part of a program, a wider program. How much information do we need to know specifically? Um, so yeah, all of our funding is program based, uh, project based. So it just needs to have a clear start and an end. And we wouldn't fund a year round program of activity. That's generally what our talent development partners um, scheme is for. But having said that, I mean, a, a classic example is something like an opera. The, the budgets in opera are just massive. And so we don't really need to know about the costume section of that, what's going on. We just need to know about the music section. Um, and, our, and our budget is, set up in a way that you can decide whether you want to give us the whole picture in the context of the whole project or if you really want to just focus and drill down on the specifics of the music example and it's really up to you how you want to do that um i'd generally i'd say if you've got no other organizations involved giving you support then maybe just focus on the music side of it but then if you've got arts council supporting one aspect of it and you're looking for our support for something else then include the whole thing for context i'd say yeah um, but yeah, it, it's it's generally put up to your your uh, your discretion, really. <laughs> cool. Yeah. If anyone else has any other questions. Cool. Yeah, Mary, that, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, when we say new music, uh, essentially, a, a, maybe a, a better way of putting it is um, music creators. So we fund music creators. So you need to be making something. And so if you're rearranging a thing in a completely different way, then yes, that, that's new music. And then and in the same way, um, maybe in, in the jazz world, uh, a traditional take on improvising a certain thing, I would say, is by default new because you're just making it up there and then. So that's that's also new. So, yeah, I would, I, by new, I don't mean trendy or anything like that. It just has to be created by you, the music creator. And we do get a lot of um, classical things coming in of, of that ilk, actually. Yeah, where 
people are remixing and using samples and, and re representing things. One, one example that comes to mind was a, a, a turntablist called uh, Shiva Feshariki, who did a thing at our New Music Biennial conference a, a couple of years ago. She recorded an orchestra playing a piece of music she made, pressed it to vinyl, then played that vinyl while the orchestra played the original track, but remixed it on the spot as it was coming back in. So yeah, all those sorts of things we can kind of support. Um, do you award projects where the music is already composed? Um, if, you, if you wanted to perform a newly commissioned piece of music, then yes, uh, we can do that, but we, that has to be a completely separate project to the creation of the music. So essentially, if you're commissioning someone to perform their, their work, yes, you can, but we can't retrospectively fund anything. So anything that's already happened can't be paid for. Basically, your, your activity has to happen after our decision date, which uh, is on the application. So um, when, you're, when you're filling in the application, there's a question about active, uh, decision date. If you click the link, it'll tell you when that is, and that's when your activity has to start. And anything that comes in before that is ineligible. Oh. Programmers coming into the open for that. Cool. So yeah, with that, um, so regarding programmers coming into the open fund, how much has to be newly composed music, we can only support the newly composed music aspect of it. So you'd need to separate that in your budget and show us um, exactly where that money's going and who's getting it. Um, again, because we always prioritize emerging first time music creators. Um, so we want to know that the music's going, the money's going to them and not people who are already well established and, and don't need our support quite so much. Um, but, but obviously you can, if you're a, if you programmed a whole festival and only a portion of it is new music, you can certainly come in for that, that aspect of it. Um, with, with the Steve Reed Award, unfortunately, I can't tell you at the moment, that's run kind of in partnership with Brownswood and Giles Peterson. Um, and it, it's sort of a every three year scenario at the moment. Um, but again, if you sign up to our, newsletters and social media, you'll be advised as whenever that happens and when it comes up. Could artists apply for budget for PR and marketing side of release as well? Yeah, so with marketing, we, we always, it's, it's, it's almost like a catch 22 and I appreciate this might be quite frustrating. We always want to see a marketing and PR plan because we want to know that what you're doing is gonna get out into the world and people are gonna know about it. But we want, the bulk and the majority of our money to be going to the creation or the performance side of the music. Um, so it's kind of a balancing. I'd say generally if the marketing budget is way, way higher than what we're putting into actually paying musicians or paying for the recording or the mixing mastering aspect of it, that will be looked on less favorably than another application where the money is going predominantly to those activities. But you do need to include it. And again, who's doing it? why are you choosing them and what what are they going to do for you is what's going to make the big difference cool are there any more questions have i missed any questions if i have missed a question please chuck it in the chat again so there's quite a few came through Um, it's, it's with uh, what is and isn't acceptable, this is, this is difficult. And we have this with fees as well, because we, we won't fund something if people, if musicians aren't being paid, but then the question we get is what is an acceptable amount to pay a musician? What's, what's the standard? And again, with, with your question about marketing, what, what's the standard for, for marketing? Um, as your application is based on your development and it's on where you are in your career and who you are. And these costs change depending on whether you're in Northern Ireland or if you're in London, if you're early career jazz or if you're a late career hip hop artist. So it's, there's really no standard. It's just that you should be aware that the person who will be assessing your application will know what you should or shouldn't be spending on. So you have to have a bit of an understanding of where you are in your career and what you need, um, that's why. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, the feedback. Oh, yeah. Good. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, good question. Um, so, yes, we do give feedback. Um, so if you have been unsuccessful, you can get in touch with us um, and, and we can tell you exactly why and what went wrong. Or, or, and you'll often find it's a technical reason uh, rather than your music wasn't good enough, which I think is what most people assume straight away. And it's not the case. The only problem is, um, so we are, as I mentioned, a organ small organisation. There's actually only five people who work in the grants team. And so we have 35 deadlines a year, thousands of applications, and it can sometimes be difficult to get hold of us. Please persevere. Um, we're trying, always trying to make that process more streamlined so we can reach more people and speak to them because we have seen it does work. If your people who have given feedback and take that on board, they are more likely to be successful the next time. Um, so please just, just be perseverant, try, try and get through to us. Someone will get back to you eventually. Um, and, it, and it's really important that people do get that feedback to know that there are so many applications we get that don't get funded purely because we haven't got enough money to go around. And, and there's nothing wrong with your application per se. It's people love the music. They thought it was good. Someone just scored higher for some other reason. And, and I think it's nice to know sometimes that it wasn't just a hit and a, a swing and a miss, you know? Um, funds prioritized for emerging early stage career. Um, we do like to prioritize first time applicants. So that's not necessarily early stage emerging career. That might just be the first time you've come into us for funding. Um, but yes, we, we always prioritize first time applicants. And we, we tend to pull a, a, a certain amount of money for emerging artists, especially in years where we don't have very many uh, early career schemes. But generally, it's the, the first, um, first time applicants that have most priority. And, and genre wise, there's no priority. It's all we try and have as broad a range as possible. And the same for reaching the regions and nations of the UK um, with all of our funding. OK. What percentage? I think that's all of those. I think um, Tamsin just mentioned getting on to some, some top tip scenarios. Um, not to sound like a broken record again, but that detail and specifics, I, I, and the reason I'm drilling this home so much is because we just get so many that just don't have that. And it, and it is often a real shame, particularly if you really, really love the music, you just can't put it through because you know it's not going to get through the panel because it's missing all that vital detail. So just do make sure that you have all of that in place. Um, the other top tip is, as I mentioned, not all funders are the same and they all have different reasons for funding what they do and doing what they do. So if you're reaching out to lots of different organizations, say you've, you've done your Arts Council application, don't approach us in the same way that you've approached the Arts Council because we're, we're very different and, and make sure that you understand the specifics of the grant scheme you're applying to. Again, because we have so many grant schemes, even within our organization, two different grant schemes are not the same. Um, so just make sure you understand it and you're hitting the criteria of what that exists to support, um, both with what you're asking to do and specifically where the money is going. Because there are some things that, but for instance, we can't, we can't spend more over 25% on equipment. So if you do that, and automatically that's just out the window. Um, so make sure you've read all of the criteria um, and understand what you're asking for. And, and again, I appreciate our website is a, is a bit of a mess. It can be quite hard to navigate, um, so please do get in touch if, if any of that doesn't make sense. Um, the only pre-application support resources we have is our website. Again, because we're only a small team, we, we don't have the time, uh, unfortunately, to spend, which is a real shame. Um, but once you've actually started an application, if you have any specific questions, that's the time to get in touch with us and, and we should be able to help you then. Um, uh, yes, I do have time for a chat. I'll also, at the end of this, I'll just do it now, actually. That's my, my email there. If you want to um, get in touch with me and, and set up a time to talk, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you about any specific issues you have with projects or anything like that. Um, again, with, with top tips, uh, our forms are, if you've experienced doing other grant applications for other organizations, I would say ours are quite straightforward um, and a lot shorter than what you might be expecting. Um, so much so in fact that people often 
are concerned that they're not able to get all of the information they need to get across because there isn't enough space. But please don't be afraid to be concise, even to the point of bullet pointing what you're doing. We don't need to see an essay or, or huge, huge detail. We want, again, very specific, concise, this is what's going to happen and why. And, and yeah, don't be afraid to do that. And, and there is ample space there for you to tell us what we need to know. Um, the other thing I would suggest is when it comes to your budget, there's a description box for you to break down the amounts and where that's all going. This is a, a great little place for you to put in any extra information that you've not been able to include anywhere else. Um, specifically on, as I say, where that money is going and who's getting it exactly, because the budget again is quite, is quite short. So with the, say, the recording costs section, that's recording, mixing, mastering. So you can split that down in the description of where that's going so we know exactly what's happening. Um, again, it, I find it often helps to get someone, if you, if you can get someone who is not musically minded or knows much about the music industry to have a quick read of your application for you, you'll find that they'll, they'll, they'll pick out something where they don't know the answer. They're like, well, what, what does that mean? And that's that, that's that example of the specifics. That's what a panelist is going to go. Oh, well, what what's happening here? You're you're likely to miss that because you'll just you. It's a given. You know, obviously, and everyone knows that, but but other people don't. And because we're a, a transparent charity, everything has to be democratically done. So there's no assumptions made at, at that stage of assessing. We can only assess on what you've put in the application form. So again, that that's that's a really helpful tip, I think, of making sure you've got every corner covered. Um, yeah, I think that's really mainly the, the general tips I, I would give. And I, I just can't stress enough about that detail. I really can't. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and guidelines again, making sure you understand that you're applying for the correct scheme because we have so many, it might not be quite relevant for what you're doing. And, and in that case, it's just not gonna get funded. So do make sure. Right. What would you like to see from jazz sector applications in general? It, it, what we'd like to see is, is the same for all applications. We want to see a clear example of how the music creator involved in this application is going to get from A to B. So where they are now, where you expect them to be after this project is finished, how is this going to progress their career or their creative development? That's all we want to see. And I, and I, I would say also, when it comes to that scoring with our assessors and how they score, 50% of the score is based on the musical example that you provide, and 50% of the score is based on the plan that you provide. And with the musical example, it's always best, if you can, to use a demo or a rough example of what you're asking to do rather than a fully polished, mixed and mastered, finished version of something you did three years ago. We really want to know more about what you're going to do and less about what you have done previously. Um, so that's always good. If you don't have that, that's, that's fine. You can use whatever you've got. Um, but, but whatever's most relevant to what you're asking to do now is best. And, yeah, and you'll never be penalized for having a demo. No one's going to say this, this isn't high quality enough. They, they'll, they'll know to expect a, a demo version of something, and that's fine. Cool. Cool. All good. <laughs> yeah, as I chucked my email in there, I don't know if you saw it, it's a bit further back, but please do get in touch. If you have any specific questions, be happy to help. Oh, sorry, I think someone did actually ask previously about sharing the presentation. 
unfortunately, things change quite a lot and this will probably be quite out of date very soon. So there'll be more new information. So I would suggest keeping an eye on our website because all of that information will be on there and hopefully in a easy, more easy way to digest than it is currently very soon.